Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at what it means to provide evidence in your teaching philosophy statement about how you enact your beliefs about teaching and learning. My name is Dr. Isabu Iqbal, and I'm an educational developer at the Center for Teaching, Learning and Technology. So in the previous video on beliefs, we established that you need to clearly articulate your beliefs about teaching and learning in your teaching philosophy statement. While it's true that you need to make your core beliefs clear, that isn't enough. Your reader wants to get a sense of how your beliefs show up in your teaching practice. And we refer to this as evidence. The purpose of including evidence in your teaching philosophy statement is that one, it helps your reader see your teaching in action. It also illustrates how you operationalize your beliefs and it captures what your teaching looks like now. So not aspirational, what it looks like now. Let's go back to some of the examples from the last video to make this more concrete. Sarah writes, I assume that all of my students are capable of making comics and that their individual points of view and voices are valuable and worth sharing. From this statement, we know that Sarah believes that all her students can make comics. Now, if this is her belief, then I'm going to expect to see something in her teaching philosophy statement that shows me what this looks like in her teaching. So here's a section of her teaching philosophy statements. statement. She writes, I demonstrate my respect for their abilities by giving them challenging assignments and pushing them to revise and hone their work. In my experience, with enough support, students rise to the challenge of difficult work. The evidence here is that she gives them challenging assignments and then incorporates revision. So as a reader, this helps me see how Sarah enacts her beliefs. As you may recall from that previous video, Jonathan writes in his teaching philosophy statement, I show my students that I have their best interests at heart and that I want to see them learn and succeed. In other words, one of Jonathan's core beliefs is that it is important to show students that you have their best interests at heart. Again, as a reader, how do I know that this isn't an empty statement? Meaning, how do I know that Jonathan's beliefs translate into his teaching? I'm going to pause for a moment and let you read this. Pause the video while you read it and then just start up again when you're ready. So the statement here helps me see how Jonathan takes his belief and enacts it in his teaching. Remember, the belief is it's important to show my students that I have their best interests at heart and how Jonathan enacts this is, in other words, the evidence is that he gathers feedback and then he lists the ways that he does this. And then he also states that he acknowledges and responds to all feedback. What you're going to need for this is your list of belief statements, something to write with, and about five or 10 minutes. Here's how the activity goes. For every belief that you've listed, brainstorm three or four strategies that you use in your teaching that align with or are a reflection of that belief. Try to be specific enough that your reader could uh, get an idea concretely of what this looks like in your teaching. You don't wanna get into the minutia, uh, nor do you wanna be overly general. For example, if you believe in collaboration among students, then perhaps you incorporate student peer assessment into your teaching or you use peer work um, for problem solving in class. Okay, back over to you. This is your activity. Thanks so much for listening and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions.